And here comes the pitch. Lofton sends a fly ball. Well hit. Right field. Salmon way back. Looking up. It's off the fence out there. That'll drive in a couple. The ball is on the warning track in Death Valley. Snow has scored. Bell has scored. Lofton to third. And he hangs on right there. A two-run triple. The Giants lead it 10-4. to four. When J.T. Snow crossed home plate, right behind him was David Bell. Little Darren Baker was standing very close to behind home plate. And J.T. Snow picked him up and carried him out of there before David Bell, who could have possibly run him over. J.T. Snow, who has a little one at home himself, recognized the situation right away and, uh, and got little Darren out of there. All right, so what I did not know about that night when J.T. scooped him up and brought him to safety was that your mother had a premonition oh, prior to that game. Oh, yeah. Please tell this story. Yeah, well, right before the game started, she goes, son, you know, whatever you're gonna do tonight, don't let Darren be the bad boy. I got a bad feeling. I said, Mom, okay, Mom. I said, he's, he's been a bad boy like 40 times, 50 times. Nothing's ever happened. So he, can't, he went out there, got the bat, almost got run over. Was your heart, I mean, when you saw that happen? Well, I, I, I wasn't that alarmed, really, because it wasn't that close, but JT had him. Yeah. And then David Bell, and then and then I got a picture on my wall where, where everybody involved signed it. David Bell on oh, that photo, wow. the umpire, uh, oh. uh, Benjamin Molina. Oh. oh, yeah. So, wow. you know, like, he doesn't even remember it. I read that he said yeah, that. Yeah, he doesn't even well, remember Well, we were all horrified and terrified and scared to death. Yeah, I know. Now, talk about another full circle moment. You had a, a season with us as a special advisor. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about making that decision. I know you wanted to make sure you would still be able to watch your son play right. baseball. Well, that was number one. Yeah. You know, because I, I got to see him play more this year than I have in his whole life combined, all the games this year. Wow. And, uh, you know, um, I had talked to Brian, so uh, we talked and talked, and I said, hey, the only thing is, you know, can I have the freedom to, to, to watch my son play? Because he was playing in the Cape Cod League this summer, so I would try to arrange where wherever he's playing that I could have a shorter route to go watch him. And sure. then it's a little bit different watching up there in the stands. The game's a lot slower up there than it is down down and looks a lot easier. Yeah. So I have to really, really be careful not to be, <laughs> you know, too critical up there. You've had to make your own adjustments up yes, there. Yes, right? I have. Yeah. And I've had to make my own adjustments as far as like, you know, my player evaluation. Like, it's quite a transition. Yeah, yeah. You have to guard against being too critical. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to be critical. Or, or case in point, I remember when I first started managing, Stan Javier missed a ball with bases loaded uh, in Montreal uh, with two outs. All the runs scored, we ended up losing. So I was about to get upset, but then I remembered I missed the same ball with bases loaded in Montreal about... 15 years before that, the same ball. Get out. I, I, and I started opening my mouth and I like, and I, it, it, if I had a flashback, <laughs> he said, he said, man, you got something, you gonna tell me something? I said, no, nah, man, I can't remember now what it was. <laughs> so, That's great. So I, I love those guys, they kept me young. Yeah. You know that, I mean, my son keeps me young. Yeah.